Hello, Organic Prepper here. The question for today, how to find the best probiotic on the market. Welcome to my first of several YouTube videos that I've planned. Hopefully I will have something informational for you. I love understanding and researching health, life, and food products. I spent several weeks reading and understanding probiotics to the best I could, and I thought it might be beneficial to someone else. Just some housekeeping, I am not a doctor, nutritionalist, or an expert. I'm just someone who is passionate about what goes into our bodies. I have lived in what I consider to be a healthy lifestyle religiously for 11 years, and I've been a part of the same lifestyle for 28 years. Don't consider anything to be medical advice that I'm giving you. It's just information that I came across. Also, I do not make any money off the products I'm going to be recommending, so I can give you an unbiased opinion. As an overview of what I'm going to talk about, what is a probiotic? What makes a great probiotic, such as species, CFUs, survival, and coding? I'm going to talk about prebiotics. I'm going to talk about fillers and gotchas, and then my recommendations along with the milk test. Probiotics are living microorganisms, such as bacteria or fungus, that provide health benefits when consumed. They live in your gut, which is your large and small intestines. There are many reported health benefits, some have been proven scientifically, and some are just observed. Different species have different health benefits. A species that I need may be worthless to your gut health problems. The problem, what do you need? It is important to find a probiotic with many species in them, so then you don't have to play games with finding the right strain. Lactobacillus and bifobacterium are the most common genus of commercial probiotic bacteria. These are the most common bacteria found in animals and are the most researched. Most probiotics are going to stick to these. Then we also have soil-based organisms, SBOs, or sometimes referred to as spore-forming probiotics. These are probiotics commonly not found in animals but in the soil. So, as an example, before humans were obsessed with killing all microorganisms with germophobia, if we ate a carrot from the ground, it probably had some microorganisms on them. Here is the most common genus of SBOs, some species of which are extremely deadly and some which have many benefits. Due to cost and less research, most probiotics do not include any SBOs in their products. Most SBOs will stop living in your gut if you stop taking the probiotics, unlike the previously discussed bacteria. The best studied genus of SBOs are the bacillus strands, and I'm sorry for butchering any of these scientific names. Bacillus clausi helps the immune system by creating bacterin and is resistant to antibiotics, so it'll help you taking away if you are on any antibiotics. Bacillus colloidians help the other good bacteria colonize in your gut, and Bacterius subtilis produces its own antibiotics and helps in vitamin K absorption. Saccharomyces boulardii. This is a fungus SBO and is a must for my personal probiotics. It kills off bad bacteria and other fungi including candida. It's very hardy and resistant to most antibiotics. It's also very expensive to manufacture, so most probiotics won't include them. Colony forming units, or CFUs, measures the number of viable bacteria or fungal cells in the product. Try to find the one that guarantees the number of colonies by the expiration date, not the manufacture date. You could have billions of cells when it's made, but then they're all dead by the time you take it, so therefore it'd be worthless. An a probiotic will have 25 billion or more CFUs per capsule. Some cheaper probiotics will use marketing to say, oh, we have 80 billion CFUs, but when you read it, that's in six capsules. You also have to note that too many CFUs will be overkill, you won't really need them, 
or it'll be actually be bad for your system unless you're recovering from antibiotics or some disease like irritable bowel syndrome. I usually stick to around 25 billion for a daily dose. I used to think the best probiotics were the ones that required refrigeration. I'd think if refrigeration is needed, then the bacteria will still be alive. This was just ignorance on my part. If the bacteria can't handle a little heat, then how are they gonna handle my stomach acid and 98 degrees of body heat? Most must be refrigerated probiotics are not good. What you want are freeze dried probiotics that recommend them to keep cool. I then put them in the refrigerator anyway, but their survival does not count on you doing this. Surviving your stomach acid is another important factor. If they can't get to your gut, then it is all over. But upon research, your gut is no happy wonderland either, so they can't be a fragile type of probiotic. This is where the CFUs come into effect. Depending on the strain of bacteria, the survival rate of the intestines is between 3% and 20%. So let's just say for argument, it's 3% for all strains. Your survival rate of a 25 billion CFU capsule still going to be 750 million colonies. That's a lot. You're going to be just fine. You can also look at the linked YouTube video that shows yogurt bacteria having a large survival rate after 40 minutes in a 2.5 pH hydrochloric acid. Certain strains, so a strain is below the genus, below the species, live better than others. Your probiotic should use a strain that is survivable. The other factor you can look into is enteric coating. This is a special coating that protects the capsule from your stomach acid. Lots of pharmaceutical companies use this technique. You just have to make sure it's a natural coating and not some synthetic monster. This will get almost 100% of your colonies to live through your stomach acid. While shelf stable freeze dried probiotics are the best, this does not mean that they will last forever. Time and heat will kill your probiotics. What do you think happens to those big box probiotics that were stored in a 120 degree warehouse for three years? Most likely they're gonna be dead. I would prefer to get my probiotics directly from the manufactured and shipped with an ice pack. The probiotic then needs to attach itself to the lining of your gut. This is what makes the SBO Bacillus colugans important in a probiotic. When to take the probiotic can be important. When you first wake up in the morning, the pH of your stomach is usually around 1, which is very acid and very concentrated. After you eat, your pH of your stomach is around 3. What is important to note, a difference of pH from 1 to 2 is not one step. It is a factor of 100. A pH of 2 is 100 times less acidic than a pH of 1. It seems that the best time to take a probiotic is in the middle of your meal. Although, I will give you a caveat. Taking the capsule at all is better than none. You aren't killing everything. In the middle of eating just seems to be optimal. So what if only 500 million survive instead of 750 million? Now that we have our perfect probiotic picked out, we need to talk about prebiotics. What is a prebiotic? It is simply food for your probiotics. If you want your gut to stay healthy, then you have to feed your bacteria. Prebiotic foods contain lots of fiber and or fermented items. This is like fruits, vegetables, sauerkraut, kimchi, apple cider vinegar with mother, and garlic. A good probiotic will include a prebiotic in their capsule. My favorite prebiotic is kiwi fruit fiber, and I did find a probiotic that used this. However, I cannot recommend it. Other great prebiotics to look at are Jerusalem artichoke, chicory root, garlic, acacia gum, asparagus, seaweed, flaxseed, or dandelions to name a few. Watch out for these fillers in your products, not just probiotics, but other vitamins and supplements. I'm not saying that they're going to hurt you, 
but why are they in there anyway? Magnesium stearate, used in the production of pills on machinery as a lubricant, and it also helps to fast fill the capsules. It also messes with the water solubility of the product. You should see this video from Thorne Laboratory. Silicon dioxide, also known as sand. This is used to give supplements more weight. The consumer will feel like they're getting more because it weighs more than their competitor. Microcrystalline cellulose, also known as wood pulp. Again, just used as a filler to make you think you're getting more. Things that are okay, vegetable cellulose. This is the actual capsule part of the probiotic. Uh, it might also be under the name HPMC. You can always also just open up the capsule and mix it with your food if you don't want to take the vegetable cellulose. Now for the fun stuff. Just to let you know, I'm not looking for the cheapest product. I am looking for the best. I am more than willing to spend a lot of money on a great product instead of spending a little money on a bad product. Zig Ziglar said, you should spend more than you thought instead of less than you should. My number one recommendation is going to be Floratrex. This is what I take and you can find it in the link below. It has 25 billion CFU per capsule, has an amazing 23 probiotic strains including three soil-based organisms. No other product that I found does this. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and it's made in the U.S. It has one of the best prebiotics, which is inulin, not to be confused with insulin, from chicory root. It's freeze-dried and does not have to be refrigerated. It comes in a glass bottle and it has no fillers. The biggest con for me of this product is that it does not have Saccharomyces boulardii species, even though if you look on their site, it hails the benefits of this strain. I actually take a separate probiotic that consists of Saccharomyces boulardii from Claire Labs. Holy price, Batman. As of this recording, this costs $70 a bottle. It has 60 capsules, and I'm taking one a day, and that comes in at $1.17 per capsule. Then on top of that, I'm purchasing the Claire Labs Saccharomyces Boulardii, and that makes it even more expensive. Floratrex also doesn't have any intric coating, but this is not a big deal for me. And make sure to check out my milk test later. It blows the rest of the products away. I originally had a big long segment on how Blue Biotics was my second choice, but after the milk test came out, I can no longer recommend them. I tried to get a hold of Blue Biotics by calling them, but their phone always went to voicemail and they never gave me a call back. I also sent them an email and I still haven't heard anything back with them. After this, I looked into their Better Business Bureau page and they have a D-, minus, mostly with shipping issues, but if you can't trust how they're shipping their product, how can you trust what's in their product? My number three choice is going to be Renew Life Ultimate Flora Probiotic Extra Care with 30 billion CFUs. You can get higher CFUs from this company with more species, but it's overkill. I would rather have the same CFUs with more species. They have a product with 150 billion CFUs, but the size of this pill is humongous. The pros for this product is it costs about 51 cents per capsule as of the making of this video. There's 30 billion CFUs, 11 species of probiotic, however none of them are soil-based organisms. It's gluten-free, dairy-free, and soy-free. The great thing is it's sold in most health food stores, so it's easy to get. It's freeze-dried and does not have to be refrigerated. Cons, like I said, no soil-based organisms. There's no prebiotics, and there's no internic coating. Other companies I looked at but failed, but I wanted to make a note, is Dr. Marcola's Complete Probiotics. It has 35 billion CFUs per capsule, and you could also get one with 50 billion CFUs. And it has 10 species of probiotics, but none of them are SBOs. It failed because 
it uses the fillers of silicon dioxide and microcrystalline cellulose. It really makes me sad because in general I like Dr. McCullough's products. I made sure to write them and see if they would consider changing it. Vitamin Bounty. It has 25 billion CFUs and 13 strains, including Saccharomyces boulardii. It has a prebiotic. It's gluten-free and made in the U.S. It failed because they use magnesium stearate. Dr. Formula's Nexobiotics. It has 17.25 billion CFUs per capsule, and it has an impressive 23 strains, including three SBOs. It is incentric coated. However, it failed because it uses melodextrin and is not dairy free or gluten free. Some other interesting finds was Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. It's more than just a probiotic. You can take a look at it. It had a lot of interesting things in it and a lot of research behind it. Prescript. This is a probiotic that only uses soil based organisms. It has 28 strands, of which you will find nowhere else. I also looked at lots of pet probiotics. I do have a dog, and I found them to be much harder to find exactly what I wanted. Pets do need some different species of probiotics. The best one I found was on Vital Planet, and I'll actually have that in my milk test coming up here. Now for the fun part, the milk test. I tested Purina's 40 Flora, Vital Planet's Flora Dog, Blue Biotics Ultimate Care, and Floratrex. So the milk test is simple. I just put a quarter cup of milk into each one of these bowls here. And uh, then I just pour out what the recommendation is. I'd have to say for the Flora Dog, there is a lot of prebiotic in there. And it, it has a huge weight in it. It just surprised me how much prebiotic was in there. I read it was most of the weight of it. Here we are putting in the blue biotic. And then next here I'll be putting in the floor uh, the floor tracks. There we go. Um, after we put in everything into there, I'm going to get a knife and a different knife for each one. I did change out knives, you don't have to worry about that. And I stirred each one in just to make sure it's going to get in. Then what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have to put in the <laughs> Florida fa fauna. I forgot that I had this. My doctor had given me this, my veterinarian. And I looked at it and I said, no, I'm not going to give this to my dog. So I forgot that I had it around. Here we are 24 hours later and this is just regular milk where you can see it's real liquidy then we get to the 40 fl flora here and it's basically just milk um, this is the vital planet and you can see the colonies on top there it's flowing on there there's also a lot of that prebiotic that's making it gooey too and here we are, the blue biotics, the Floratrex. And I'm going to keep my wife's sound in here because I think it's fun. Oh man, that's much better. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Hail's coming. That is so good. I can't wait to take this one. Cool. We're taking that tomorrow. Here we are, 48 hours later um, for the final showing. I got this extra bowl out here so I can pour it in there so you can see how it is. Uh, here's the regular milk. It it uh, it smells really rancid. <laughs> and just pour it in there. It's been out in the hot all 48 hours here. Here's the Purina brand. It's it's just basically milk. You can actually see the mixture at the bottom. They're just sitting. It's uh, it's worthless. I'm glad I didn't give it to my dog. Here's the Vital Planet. Um, I got it at my local health food store. 
um, you can see that it's pretty good some of that is because of the again prebiotic and so but it, it did it did okay I wouldn't mind finding a better product if I can here's the blue biotics we actually were taking this at the time and we stopped taking it because it, it's worthless and you can see me smelling it there it smelled so bad it was so rancid it didn't make yogurt at all And at last, the Floratrex. I mean, look at that. That is yogurt. It smells fantastic. You know, we don't do dairy, so I didn't taste it. But there it is going into the bowl. I actually couldn't believe the test results from the Blue Biotics, so I ran it a second time. And here's after 48 hours on the second time. As you can see, the results are pretty much the same. It's just liquid milk thank you so much for listening I hope this helps somebody you're able to get some information out of it I have a couple other videos that I have planned right now um, I'm gonna go over uh, some C60 and also some water filtration and those are the two that I have planned for the future here my question for everyone out there is do you have a pet probiotic that you really like Maybe one that I can test. And if you have any other comments, please make them below. And remember, love God, love life, keep healthy.